Uh, I'll take off my uh, uh, interventional hat and move to some uh, hopefully basic science and be concentrated on uh, uh, cardiology and heart failure. You remember the first issue of uh, uh, Jack uh, uh, Cardio Oncology, that's the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, was issued in November in 2019. And this is Dr. Valentin Fuster, who is the editor of chief uh, of, uh, editor in chief of Jack, and he was. Uh, he did ask us the question, should we call it cardio-oncology or oncocardiology? And the answer for that, you know, should be cardio-oncology because the cardiologists always come with cards saying, get well soon, I'm the cardiologist. But look at the oncologist. They have to turn everything off. Look at their medication. Immuno checkpoint inhibitor, protozoans inhibitors, parazine kinase inhibitor. They need, they need to switch everything off. So they, we should call them oncologists, not oncologists, and uh, that's why we should call it cardio-oncology. Now, the idea is, can we prevent today's cancer patients from being tomorrow's heart failure victims? Just let, let's get some data, and it's really encouraging data. That's the uh, prognosis and survival for cancer is improving for children and for uh, adults, and for children, more than 80% of uh, uh, their cancer, they, uh, they survive up to 10 years. And uh, there is increasing number of cancer survivors. When they uh, survive, then the risk of cardiovascular disease appear. And anthracycline and radiotherapy are the main problem or the main culprit. But there are new therapy and they have their uh, unique problem. And the mechanism of uh, toxicity uh, is really not well understood, and uh, the strategies are limited because of few data and few trials, and we need to know about the new approach, how to deal with that. Now, uh, the effect could be an acute effect that causes myocardial damage, arrhythmia, ischemic vascular events, coronary disease, thromboembolism, and hypertension, but will be concentrated uh, concentrating on myocyte damage and acute heart failure. The, the chronic effect uh, include uh, ventricular dysfunctions with heart failure, half breath or half breath, accelerated exacerbation of uh, atherosclerosis and increased risk of uh, cardiovascular, uh, cerebrovascular disease and peripheral vascular disease, and some changes on the length term of the vascular function because the medication may affect the endothelial function some autonomic changes and reconditioning of the patient due to the therapy. Now, if you see the function of the heart, and especially of the uh, uh, in the children, uh, just uh, uh, at the beginning, they have... Uh, so, okay, so we'll... Okay, can you see my... Okay. So... Is it working here? Uh, okay, so look at uh, the blue line in the middle that uh, uh, the reduction of uh, uh, heart function is present uh, uh, directly after uh, the uh, giving the chemotherapy. Now, now we reach after stopping this chemotherapy that the normalization of the heart function and then a few days, a few years later, will get decrease in the heart function uh, again. So uh, apart from all those things, from the uh, effect of the cancer for the children, we see the cardiac implication uh, uh, is very important. So the anthracycline uh, induced what we call anthracycline congestive heart failure, and the incidence is two percent uh, at two years, up to five percent at five years. And the median is around 2.8% at six years. There is difference between children and adults. The heart of the children is totally different from the others because there is low incidence of acute toxicity in the children compared to the other, minimal pre existing cardiovascular disease compared to the other, minimal uh, comorbidity compared to the other, and the latency uh, after re receiving treatment may uh, extend to decades or more. And myocytes are really uh, uh, more apt to uh, apoptosis compared to the other, which is resistant to apoptosis. And the myocytes in the children are uh, undergoing maturation compared to mature myocytes in the uh, earth. 
So the anther cycling can cause acute toxicity. The acute toxicity is predominantly supraventricular arrhythmia. Uh, there are some risk uh, factors and develop uh, uh, only in 1% or less. The early cardiac toxicity, or what we call type 1, happen within the first year of the treatment. And there is the late cardiac toxicity, which is uh, more common, especially in the children, happen after one year. And the median is seven years after the treatment. How does the answer cycling work? It's not clear understood, but there is the most important theory that the answer cycling uh, binds to topoisomerase tubic, yeah. and that's once it's uh, uh, combined to this receptor, it affects the function of the mitochondria, and that really causes the release of free oxygen receptor, uh, uh, radical, and that's caused damage to the DNA, and then damage to the microfibers and get vacuolation in the muscle, and that's the uh, chronic muscle damage. So the uh, risk factor depends on the do dose and the type of the anthracycline. One anthracycline is more toxic than the other. There is a greater toxicity in younger people and elderly people, and the dis uh, distinctive me mechanism between uh, those two things. And the main thing is accumulation of free radicals, and that's cause myocardial damage. So greater toxicity risk in the presence of other conventional risk factors. Look at that. If the patient has ha hypertension to start with, the incidence of cardiac toxicity goes a, uh, one and a half. Coronary artery disease exceeds doubling. Age more than 55, more doubling. If you have three risk factor, it's five to six uh, times. So, and in, in women, uh, do, uh, dominate uh, the, the, uh, after treatment for breast cancer after se seven years. And if there is cardiovascular uh, risk factor in, the, uh, in those ladies, that doubles, uh, they doubles their risk to develop cardiac toxicity. Now, uh, also the combination of chemotherapy for the breast cancer is an important thing. So let's uh, uh, concentrate on, on that. If we give uh, anthracycline alone, is uh, the incidence around 4.3% at five years. Now, most of the breast cancer receive Herceptin or uh, HR2, uh, uh, HRER2 or receptor antagonist, and that's caused them to develop cardiotoxicity around 12%, because really, the, uh, when we give that, we are preventing the uh, uh, action of uh, HER2 uh, uh, receptor, which is protective for the heart. Once we block this receptor, we will get more damage, especially if we, the patient is receiving anthracycline. So if the patient receiving combination, the risk of developing cardiac toxicity goes up to 20%. So the importance of combination chemotherapy in for breast cancer is very uh, uh, we, we need to keep it uh, in mind and assess the patient whether they are at risk of developing. So we talked about those dependent and the mode of an administration. Instead of giving the bolus, that's cause uh, really a quick accumulation of uh, oxygen free radicals, it's better to give the medication as continuous infusion. And uh, as we said, the children and the elderly are more prone and there is overlap between the cardiotoxicity effect and the anti-tumor effect of this medication. So in summary, cardiomyocyte dam damage is, are mediated, uh, especially in the answer of cycling, through the activation of ra uh, free uh, oxygen radical pr product, mitochondrial dysfunction, and DNA da damage. And this actually the changes induce apoptosis, and that's mediate the effect of acute cardiac toxicity. But what's the mechanism for long-term or late acute cardiac toxicity? It's probably just the accumulation of those toxic substances inside the uh, myocardium. So we concentrated on the anthracycline, but there are a lot, a lot of medication that we use in the chemotherapy, and I don't have the time to go through that. So I'll concentrate on a couple. Let's concentrate on uh, monoclonal tyrosine kinase inhibitor, uh, the, whether the, it's uh, re real antibody or small molecules. And if you review the side effects and really what uh, the FDA put, uh, is putting warning that all of them, most of them cause hypertension and a lot of them cause uh, arterial thromboembolic events. 
and a lot of them <laughs> uh, cardiac dysfunction. So why are we using those medication? Well, the reason for that, look at this. In a patient who is trying myeloid leukemia, before using those medication, the conventional therapy, the survival rate only 15% at 18 months. But when we use this medication like imatinib, look at the survival rate, 89% at 18 months. So we are converting this deadly disease into a chronic disease or curable uh, disease. So uh, uh, I'll skip uh, the idea on pulmonary hypertension since we don't have time. So I uh, gave you about the pyrazine kinase inhibitor. Let's talk about immunotherapy. The immunotherapy, the immunochick, uh, uh, immunochick point in inhibitor. And there is nivolumab and epilumumab. The, those are common combination drug. And those cause uh, really uh, like a great uh, revolution in the uh, uh, treatment of uh, uh, some cancer. Look at this uh, cancer. This is metastatic melanoma. And without using this treatment, the uh, survival rate is only 15%. But when we use this uh, medication, the survival rate is around 60%. And everyone should uh, remember President Jimmy Carter. You know uh, President Jim Jimmy Carter. He is from the Democratic uh, Party. He won the residency against uh, uh, presidency against uh, Gerard Paul in 1976. And uh, he has metastatic melanoma. And he was treated with that, and although he did have metastasis to the brain and the liver, and he reached full cure, and he's still alive at age of 96 till, till uh, now. And now, uh, it's, uh, uh, this medication caused a lot of uh, side effects uh, outside the heart, like colitis, pneumonitis, and uh, myocarditis is really low incidence. It's 1%, but unfortunately, the mortality rate is around 50% in this disease. Once we get myocarditis in this, its uh, fatality rate is very high. So uh, uh, let, let me give you uh, an explanatory case. This is a 56-year-old woman, a metastatic Merkel cell carcinoma, uh, treated with carboplatinum and uh, did not uh, improve, and then switched to the combination of this immunocheck points inhibitor, and after two cycles, she developed fatigue, myalgia, some pain in the hip and the thigh. There were some elevation uh, in the uh, troponin, uh, but, and the CMR showed normal uh, uh, left ventricular ejection fraction and suggestion of myocarditis. Look at her troponin level. At the beginning, it's really very high. And we start, uh, she received steroids at high dose, did not improve, received anti uh, macrophenolate, and did, uh, did not improve, received uh, tartolimus, and at that time uh, did improve, and she uh, uh, improved significantly, and look, the troponin went back to normal. So she has significant risk of sudden cardiac death. The symptoms with this my kind of myocarditis is positive symptoms. The patient may develop just fatigue, uh, 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 chest pain, and they respond to high dose of steroids, and uh, uh, she continued to do well. So this is the idea of uh, checkpoints myocarditis. Uh, I'm going to skip that and uh, the, uh, concentrate on the prevention. The, every patient who received in that with risk factor, we consider that at, at risk or stage A heart failure, and then we may give some medication. The medication to protect uh, anthracycline cardiotoxicity, only one medication is dextraldoxan, uh, and it prevents, uh, 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 as you said, the uh, interaction with topoisomerase uh, 2 beta and prevent the direct effect of the toxicity on the cardiac muscle. And it is really, uh, there is strong data for that, but unfortunately, it's only approved for the treatment of uh, metastatic breast cancer. Can we get an extra minute? You just, I, uh, uh, this is the, okay, so it's uh, really approved only for metastatic breast cancer, but there is a lot of data. If we use it early, we can prevent cardiotoxicity. Using uh, of the statin also uh, prevent the accumulation of toxic substance. And there are some few data for that. Uh, using uh, exercise also prevents 
the development of car, uh, cardiotoxicity, and this is some data in the children, and if we do that early and there is dose response, the more exercise the patient is doing, the less cardiac toxicity. So how do we monitor that? There is a lot of things you can monitor with uh, uh, troponin, but uh, to concentrate on the ejection fraction just by echo is not ad adequate. So GLS may be more sensitive to detect cardiac dysfunction. So, uh, uh, and uh, uh, starting treatment for preventing heart failure as early as possible using ACE inhibitor or beta blocker. There is no data for the uh, FGLT2 inhibitor. So, uh, 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 and there is only few data, uh, scattered data, 16 study, but small number showing that you may get uh, improvement. So, in conclusion, there are uh, the, uh, this area of uh, cardio oncology treatment is still far from the limit. And we need to do ad hoc. We cannot do ad hoc that just when we see the patient, we start uh, any kind of therapy for heart failure. It requires re uh, really a close relationship with our oncology uh, colleagues and apply what we know the uh, data for every in uh, by individual cases to put uh, the plan and there is a lot of cases you can all use all, all of those medications. If I can uh, move to radiation induced uh, heart disease, there is, uh, it, it may affect the macro vessel, the micro vessel and the valve and cause to uh, heart failure and uh, with that uh, 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 <laughs> give, me a, give me one minute. Uh, okay. 30 seconds. 30 yeah. seconds. So uh, uh, the uh, radiation is uh, depending on the dose and uh, the area that's exposed. Uh, 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 the the, the uh, tumor location, location, whether we are radiating the chest or the whole heart, and with, uh, according to the age, and whether we are using uh, anthracycline. Uh, and the presence of other risk factor or established cardiovascular disease, and it may uh, uh, last after uh, 10 years of uh, radiation. So let me present, this is a, a new case, uh, everybody talking about car uh, uh, therapy. Uh, well, 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 I'm, I'm, I cover the main points. Thank you very much.